movies. Look, I am not in the mood for the movies, Addie. You haven't been in the mood since the chief passed away. That has nothing to do with it. It's been three months now. Look, you're beginning to get on my nerves. I just want us to go to the movies. Listen, you collard green eating wench. <laughs> collard green eating. Yeah. Why do you want to go to the movies anyway? They're always about the same thing. Some teenager with pimples trying to lose their virginity. <laughs> well, it beats going to the dermatologist. Huh, and you should know about that. Besides, I don't eat collard greens. You do so, you eat chitlins too. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. No, no, no. Sit down. You've been at work all day. Thanks. But Sam, you were at school all day. So you were at school all day too. Yeah, but I slept. <laughs> what? You slept in school? Oh, don't worry, Aunt Nell. See, there were on multiplication tables. And Julie taught me computer math. So I'm way ahead of my whole class. Ah. In that case, what's eight times seven? I'll help Katie and Julie with the pots and pans. <laughs> It's 56. <laughs> Don't you think the kids are acting a little peculiar? Peculiar? Yes. No little boy wants to clean pots and pans. Why not? He's already done his laundry and washed the car. <laughs> Oops, I forgot. Oh, hi, Simpson. Hiya, Samantha. Excuse me, Simpson. I have to go finish polishing the silverware. Oh, Nell grounded you, huh? No. I like polishing silverware. Nell, is Samantha acting a little peculiar? Why does everyone think there's something peculiar with my kids? Simply because they're considerate, huh? She's right. Those kids aren't peculiar. They are weird. <laughs> Annie, will you please butt out? I'm sorry, Simpson. Oh, oh, what's, what's in the box? Oh, it's for Joey. It's a belated birthday present. Didn't you already give him a catcher's mitt for his birthday? This is from the chief. The chief? Yeah. Just before he passed away, the chief ordered a caboose and some extra track for Joey's electric train. It finally got here. I had it gift wrapped. The chief didn't want it to come to the house. He was afraid Nell had ruined the surprise. <laughs> he always used to say she was nosy. Nosy? Oh, yeah. The chief used to say if he had Nell on the police force, he'd assign her to the airport to sniff the luggage. <laughs> Thank you, Simpson, for bringing the package by, okay? Sure, Nell. No, the chief used to say a lot of funny things about you, Nell. I don't want to hear it right now, and I would appreciate it in the future if you would not talk about the chief in front of my kids. Well, why not? Down at the station, we talk about him all the time. We even named the new cat Kaniski. <laughs> and he's just like the chief. He's tough, he don't like to be petted, and he loves leftovers. <laughs> goodbye, Simpson. Yeah, goodbye, Nell. So long, Hattie. You know, sometimes I just don't understand people. Well, I understand people, but I sure don't understand you. What? What's that supposed you to be? You won't finish it now. What's that? Nothing. Uh, no, we'll talk about it later. Now, what is there to talk about? It's for him. For me? Why are you sticking your nose into my... Why don't you go down to the airport and sniff some luggage? <laughs> now, why are you making it such a big deal? It's a caboose for your electric train. Yay! You did it again! <clears throat> Joey, go sit down on the sofa. This is... This is from the chief. You see, he wanted to surprise you on your birthday, but it just got here today. Good old chief. You see, that's why I was gonna wait till later to give it to you. I knew... I know how much you love the chief, and I knew that an electric train would only remind you of him and, and make you sad. And you understand that, don't you, honey? Oh, I understand, Aunt Nell. I'll be sad upstairs. <laughs> you know, that is 
the first normal behavior I've seen in this house. I'm gonna remove your face. <laughs> hi, Grandpa. Oh, hi, Andy. Now, uh, I'm going out to the movies. The movies? When there's a football game on TV? So what? Grandpa, there was a time they couldn't tear you and the chief away from the set. Uh, who wants to look at football? It's boring. Always the same. Bunch of millionaire white guys throwing the ball to a bunch of millionaire black guys. <laughs> Grandpa's acting a little peculiar. Again with the peculiar? <laughs> We're all done with the pots and pans now. Yeah, Katie and I are gonna go up and clean up our room. Unless there's something else you want us to do. Oh, come on, girls, you've done so much, and I am so proud of you. All I want you to do is go upstairs and relax. Thanks. <laughs> you know, I cannot believe the two of you are sharing a room and still speaking to each other. Are you kidding? We love it. Besides, it's fun hearing Sam's teenage problems with boys. And I suppose you've never had problems with boys, huh? Well, yeah, but I always had the solution. <laughs> you see, if they start... Ah, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> and I don't want you telling your sister about it either. Yeah, but Nell, it's a good education for me. Katie talks in her sleep. <laughs> Why are you telling things of me? I don't talk in my sleep. Oh, yes, you do. Want to take a nap? Oh, come on. <laughs> I cannot believe the two of them actually act like they enjoy sharing a room. You know, now, why are they sharing a room? I mean, it's not like there's not enough room in the house. What about the chief's room? I mean, Addy? Baby, look, you're gonna miss your movie, okay? Well, okay, Nell, but I sure hope this family gets back to normal. I mean, everybody's being so nice to each other. It's like coming over to the little house on the prairie. <laughs> Where are you going with Sydney? I'm trying to get him out of the room. Why? Now, the room is not big enough for me, Julie, and the bear. So we flipped for it and the bear lost. <laughs> Come on, Jonathan. You know I wanted you to stay. Well, you never actually said so. Oh, uh, excuse me. Um, here, darling. Why don't you take this dress? Thanks, okay? Nell. And I'll get Sydney out of here. L let me explain something to you, Nell. In, in psychological terms, Sydney represented Julie's security blanket. Whenever Julie was significantly depressed, she would cuddle up with her teddy bear. Now Julie's security blanket is me. Jonathan, are you all right? Yeah. Sure. Here, wear that to dinner. Baby, are you sure it's the bear you want to get out of the room? Jonathan's a much better cuddler than Sydney is. Yeah. Sure, that's all we could do is cuddle. The walls are paper thin. Listen, in Japan, they have walls made out of rice paper, and that, ne that never stopped them. Why do you think they don't have time to cook the sushi? <laughs> we can't even have a good argument without everyone in the house knowing about it. You've only been married three months. What do you have to argue about? Just little personal things, like last night. Excuse me, I'm going to leave <laughs> I had this little argument over should Julie wear a nightgown or my pajama tops. I go for pajama tops! <laughs> Julie, come here. Come on. Yeah, no. I vote for the pajama top, too. <laughs> Okay, Sydney. Now, where am I gonna put you, huh? I oh, forget it.
Jonathan, you can't take my favorite chair. Julie, I'm just trying to make it more comfortable. Jonathan, I've had that chair since I was six years old. Julie, my room is just too small. Every time I turn around that little room, I trip over this chair. <laughs> I never fall over it. Because it likes you better. <laughs> it's a documented fact, Julie. Inanimate objects very often have a life of their own. Last night in the dark, I was walking to the bathroom, and when I passed by this chair, it deliberately stuck out its leg and tripped me. Did you hear it laugh? No, but I heard you laugh. <laughs> Honey, I know it's difficult, but it's only temporary. In 10, 12 years, we'll have a place of our own. I've given this a lot of thought, and there's a perfectly simple solution to the problem. What's the solution? Why don't we move into your father's room? Jonathan, I'm sorry. Boy, I never expected that. It was just a reflex action. I didn't mean to do it. You know, for a girl who prides herself on being a cool intellectual, you certainly have a terrific right cross. <laughs> What's happening here? I slapped Jonathan. Julie! Julie's never slapped my face before. In fact, no girl has ever slapped my face. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, I've never given a girl a reason to slap my face. You don't have to give me your resume. Just tell me what happened. It was nothing. Nothing? You slapped my face. To be perfectly honest with you, no never girl mind. has... Never mind! It was just something he said. Julie, no matter how angry you get, you should never have a reason to slap your husband's face. Now, honey, what did you say? All I said was, why don't we move into your father's room? <laughs> what have I done? You slapped my face. <laughs> no girl has ever slapped my face. Now, that makes two in one day. But I didn't mean to. Yes, you did. So did she. No, it's different with her. Why is it different when I slap him? Because you're not as nice a person as I am. I guess I shouldn't have said anything. After all, I'm new in this family. I'm practically an outsider. Oh, Jonathan, Jonathan, baby, don't say that. I love you. No. Oh, you're my husband, darling. I love you. Yes, I love you, too. I love you just as much as I love Grandpa. I love Katie, I love Julie, I love Samantha, I love Joey. I mean, you're a part of this family. I just don't want to hear from you. <laughs> Grandpa, are you back from movies already? I didn't go to the movies. I took a long walk. You've only been gone 10 minutes. How can you take a long walk? When you're walking through Glenlawn, 10 minutes is a long walk. <laughs> Samantha, Katie. Joey! Excuse me, what are you doing? I'm calling a family meeting. Come on, sit down here, everybody. What's going on? Grandpa wants a family meeting. Wow. My first family <laughs> meeting. C can we get a picture? <laughs> no, we don't have time for Kata to fix her hair. <laughs> Where's Joey? He's taking a bath. Well, I'll get right to the point. I don't think we're being fair to the newlyweds. Grandpa, Jonathan and I aren't complaining. Yeah, now that we've got the bear out of the room, it's fine. You had a bear in your room? <laughs> uh, it was only staying there for the winter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I was lying in bed, listening to Julie and Jonathan whispering in the next room. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> but, um, I vote for pajama tops. <laughs> Will you please just get on with it? I mean, what is this about? Yes, well, I was thinking about when Mildred and I were first married and uh, we shared her small room and her folks' home with six brothers, three sisters, a bear, her Grandpa, maiden aunt, and... Grandma had a teddy bear, too? No, the bear was her mother. <laughs> Grandpa, do you mean you call this family meeting just so you could talk about your mother-in-law? I never pass up a chance to take a shot at that old lady. <laughs> Get to the point. What is this about? Well, Mildred and I had no privacy, and neither do Jonathan and Julie. So I arrived at the best solution possible. Joey and I have a large room. Let the kids move in there. 
their room isn't big enough for you and Joey. I won't be in it. Ah. And just where will you be? I am moving to a retirement home. Okay, this family meeting is adjourned on account of temporary insanity. <laughs> Hear me out now. No Hear way, Grandpa. Forget it, Grandpa. Grandpa, that's the silliest idea I've ever heard from another human being. If you move on account of us, you'll have to do it over my dead body. How'd he get into this family meeting? <laughs> he belongs here, but he's been told not to speak. <laughs> Before I would let you move into a retirement home, I would move into a retirement home. That's even a better solution. <laughs> wait outside. Wait she needs help Hold packing. it. Hold it. <laughs> Nobody is moving into a retirement home. Hey, I still don't see why Julie and I just don't move into the chief's room. <laughs> you never learn, do you? <laughs> Disgusting. My sister must have been desperate. Oh, I don't know where to look. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> oh, Simpson, come on in. Hi, Nell. Hi. I finally got myself to clean out the chief's locker. These are his personal effects. I you, thought you and the family might want them. Want a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Here. Thanks. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Nell. Even after all this time, every morning when I walk in the station, I keep expecting to hear him hollering at me. Simpson! But I didn't mind. The chief never yelled at a person he didn't like. Well, then he must have loved me. <laughs> he did. By the way, not all his things are in the box. If you don't mind, I kept his bowling shoes. They don't fit. I just wanted to have something of his. set up his electric train in here. Who slapped him first? <laughs> Nobody slapped him. What did 
I do wrong? Listen, Joey. The chief is no longer with us. So you're just going to have to show him some respect. I respect him. He played trains with me in here all the time. I never got to work him, but it was fun watching him do it. <laughs> well, just look at us. You know, I like this. Everyone's smiling about Carl. Is this family crazy? I don't see anything to be smiling about. Now, hold on, though. Just a minute. It's high time we stop pussyfooting around this house, never even mentioning his name. The best way to remember someone you love is to talk about them. You kids loved your father. It's not right for you not to talk about him. Lord knows Daddy gave us a lot to talk about. <laughs> hey, you can say sure. that again. <laughs> remember when you and I eloped and I had to tell Daddy we got married? Oh, boy, do I. I said, Daddy, Jonathan and I just got married. And he looked at me with such love. And he put his arms around me and he said, you're grounded for a year. <laughs> and then he shook my hand and said, welcome to the family, son. And you're grounded for two years. Yeah, you know, that was his answer for everything. Remember when Katie was dating that college professor and I stuck up for her? Well, he grounded me for having a sister who dates older men. <laughs> Did I, did I ever tell you about the time I missed a meeting of our Polish-American club? Well, he pulled the plug on my TV. Imagine grounding your own father. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look, we can move the rest of your things in here after dinner, okay? Thank you, Lou. Oh, and Joey, do you think that I could play with your trains in here before they move in, please? <laughs> sure. Thanks. Surprisingly enough, I'm sure Carl would approve. <laughs> yeah. You know, Daddy did surprise us once in a while. <laughs> yeah, you know, I remember one night when I was in high school and um, I told him Ricky Hamilton was taking me to a drive-in movie. Yeah, I remember that. Ricky was cute. <laughs> yeah. He was. And, oh, you guys, I couldn't believe it, but he said, great, have a good time. Well, just as we parked, two police cars pulled up on either side of us. <laughs> Officer Murphy even brought us a pizza. Ah, speaking of food, do you remember the time your father cooked his shoes? <laughs> oh, 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 wait, wait. How about the time he arrested Andy Gibb and his entire band? Andy Gibb? Oh, yeah, Andy Gibb, but forget him. How about the time he arrested all of us? Put us in. Oh, 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 oh,